Hi, I'm Karen Lacey. And I'm Melanie Dellis. And this is Muse Story, where we uncover the unusual histories hidden around us. Today, our topic is about no 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 And what we mean by gnomes are the garden variety, garden gnomes. And this idea actually came um, from a visit to my aunt's house. She has in a very eclectic garden, and uh, there's a little bit of everything around there. There's some fairies and uh, some uh, bear tracks, turtles, you name it, it's probably there in, in the garden. And one of the things we noticed was garden gnomes. Mm -hmm. And we kind of started talking about what a garden gnome means to us mm -hmm. and some of the things that that evoked for us. And we realized it was actually very, very different uh, things. Yeah. yeah. Like, and we didn't even realize the history, like the unusual history that was actually behind the garden gnomes. Mm -hmm. So the more we researched it, uh, the more interesting they became. It wasn't just Travelocity. <laughs> it was, it, by the way, I painted him in the ceramics hot spot, I think it was called. Oh, no, I, I did a good job, right? Right? Okay, so, um, well, I found your story interesting. Yeah, so the first thing I think of when I think of garden gnomes, actually, is being a little kid and watching Nickelodeon. And there was this TV show called David the Gnome. And it was this adorable little gnome that traveled around and helped animals with his wife and a whole bunch of other known people. And I'm not exactly sure what else they did, except that he was a doctor and there were lots of animals and there was always something going on, like taking a splinter out of the foot of a rabbit. Um, I think they even rode a fox occasionally through the forest. Uh, that was kind of the idea. And I, for some reason, was just entranced with this cartoon. Um, I'm not sure why, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, something about the '80s. There being a lot of cartoons that had well, like the Smurfs the too, like oh, the the Smurfs or the gummy bears. I don't remember the gummy bears. I oh, mean, I, I eat them. Love the gummy bears. Chocolate covered gummy bears. They have nothing to do with the food. Oh, <laughs> it's gummy with like an I at the end. Isn't that how you spell gummy bear? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, anyway, not we're sure. digressing. Different, not different, sure. different. different Different, wow. different podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, so David the Gnome. My other one was actually another childhood memory, and that one is the Gnome Mobile. The Gnome Mobile. Yeah. They look like this one, right? No, they, they, the, David gnome, the Gnome, the David like the gnome looks just like this. Yeah. The Gnome Mobile, a couple of them look like that. I think the grandfather figure, the Gnome grandfather, I think his name was Jasper, maybe, he looked like that. But anyway, they live in the forest, which is being threatened by people logging and messing with the forest and whatnot. And so they needed to find a human who they never were supposed to talk to to help save them and take them to a special other place. What happens, other if, forest. What happens if they talk to the human? I think they're just supposed to not be known to humans. Because that's interesting because the mythology of it, of the, an actual known is that they're only they're not allowed to be seen by humans and they don't run around in the daylight because then they'll turn to stone in the daylight and that's why we see them in the gardens like as statues and or if they're talking to a human they like turn to stone and at night they wander around and like protect they, they're earth dwellers so they go through the earth really fast and they and they do all this. Sorry. I interrupted no. your story. But I thought no. that was interesting because that is probably, probably where they got a lot of the story from. They did. They stripped a lot of that away. There was nothing about them going underground, but they lived in and around trees. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, it was being threatened. Yeah. And basically they end up meeting some guy and his grandchildren, and they all pile into the car, and they're taken to safety. But they have a gnome car? I basically just, spoiler alert, just told you the end. No, it's just a regular car that the, um, the human. older human owns, and um, they start calling it the no mobile. And there's this whole singing thing with the no mobile. Um, it's pretty funny, but um, yes, hilarious hijinks ensue, and there's a whole scene with bubbles. But yeah, bubbles. 
Yeah, they make some kind of soapy bubble thing. It has to do with um, the humans walk upon um, the, I guess it's the, the mating ritual where um, you get all soapied up or something. And Wait, um, this is in the gnome? Wait, the gnomes are doing the mating? Wait a minute. The gnomes, <laughs> yes. The gnomes, well, okay, they're, they're not doing, it's not mating. It's, more, it's courting. It's courting. I said the wrong word. Courting. Where um, it's kind of like the Sadie Hawkins dance kind of thing. Like you have to... You know, you grab the the female, runs around trying to grab the man that she wants, or the gnome in this case. And I'm not sure if you were supposed to get in the bubbles or this guy just did. And honestly, looking back, I'm not sure why the bubbles are even there. Except to have like a fun little moment. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. But those are my two gnome memories, which have nothing to do with historical fact. Other well, than the name and maybe maybe some mythology, and some mythology kind of little sprinkled in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. didn't uh, I mean gnomes and gnome-like images have been around since ancient Rome, right? Mm-hmm. So they have had, wasn't it in ancient Rome like the the gnomes or the gnome-like little statues? They weren't figurines. quite gnomes. They weren't quite gnomes. They were kind of like the earlier version of gnomes. But they were they were a little on the dirty side. Yeah, they were dirty. They were not. Naughty gnomes. Naughty gnomes. So not roaming gnomes. This is like, these are roaming gnomes, but they were naughty gnomes. <laughs> we do not have a, an image of a naughty gnome here for you today, unfortunately. But but in ancient Rome, they, they used to put those out in the gardens for one of the gods, representing one of the gods. And um, they had parties like that, like you were just describing. Wasn't he, like, was he a fertility god? Yeah, he was yeah. one of the fertility gods. That makes sense why he's not. <laughs> and why they had naughty parties, naughty gnome parties, but um, but yeah. So uh, my my gnome story is more uh, is a little different. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch. I didn't actually watch those shows. I didn't even unfortunately know that they existed. Otherwise, I totally would have watched well, them. I watched Smurfs all the time. Well, yeah. I, well, the gnome mobile was much older. It was a film that came out like by, by Disney, and it was much 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 older. Not like maybe only like. 20, 30 years older, but for some reason that was something that I think my grandfather owned the VHS for it, and we watched it. That's cool. Mm-hmm. My grandfather, actually, now that we're speaking about grandfathers, he actually gave me my introduction into gnomeness. The world of the gnomes. The world of the gnomes. And he had this guy, he is cast iron to it. It looks like I'm straining to pick him up. It's because he's heavy. He's very anyway, um, he looks very heavy. He's super old. My my grandpa actually got him in um, Germany in World War II. He was uh, 16. He's a cav- cavalry soldier in the army. And while he was over there, he got this gnome, and it just kind of came home with him, and we've just had it in our family ever since. So this is a really good example of one of the, not one of the first gnomes, but definitely one of the, older gnomes that are still around today. They're cast iron, they're from Germany, and they're, uh, this one is from the 1930s, but really, Philip Griebel in Germany, he was he was the one who kind of started the ceramic gnome craze back in the mid-1800s, I think it was. And yeah, and I know... more like this guy, I think. Yeah, and I believe there was a, a, a gentleman in England, and so I... I I'm not 100% sure why people have the gnomes. I think it was just like a fun little tchotchke type of type of thing. But um, this gentleman loved them so much. He bought like kind of like 20, 21 mm-hmm. um, over to England. And um, he kind of sprinkled them around his property. Um, and I think it was called like Lambert Hall or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was like 1847. And I think he's the one that really tipped off the craze in England for garden gnomes because he sprinkled them around his garden um, and the lands and whatnot. And then from what I understand, the daughters absolutely hated them. They thought they were just not that great. And they got rid of all 20 and they left one behind. Um, because they didn't see him because you know, they were scattered everywhere. Well, they hide. They, and they, they hide. <laughs> they, so, they hide from humans. So he was hiding. And uh, mm-hmm. he's been named Lambie, the garden gnome. And he was uh, discovered. Now there's actually a whole bunch of um, replicas you can get. And he's still he's still there at that hall in, in England. Well, England and France are pretty funny, and even in Italy, because they have a whole federation. It's called the Gnome 
the Gnome Liberation Front. I, I want to join. I think it's what it's called. I think I think it's a very important and worthy cause. They, I think it's a lot of fun too. <laughs> they will go around. Their whole thing is freeing gnomes from garden slavery. So they will go around in the middle of the night and steal the gnomes from people's gardens. And they will leave little notes saying, your gnome has been freed or what, whatever, you know, and they'll sign their libera gnome liberation front's name at the bottom. And then they'll spend the next few months taking pictures of that person's gnome in different places around the world. And they'll send them the photos and say, not like, like, not like holding it ransom or anything, but like they'll send it the, send them yeah. the photos saying like, this is where I am now because I'm free and like, not under your slavery and all this other stuff. So it's it, pretty funny. It kind of reminds me of, there's a little kid's book called Flat Stanley. And if you yeah. have any little kids, I'm not sure where, um, I have a, a niece that actually did this a few years ago. Yeah, well, my kids did it. And your kids did yeah, too? Yeah, we did it okay. here in uh, San Diego. We did it. Yeah. I, I, I've never heard of it until I moved here. Yeah. But um, my niece is actually on the East Coast, so it's got to be something that's become a thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you're you're supposed to mail it to someone, and they're supposed to take it to different places. And I guess you could mail it to multiple people or, yeah. um, or you know, whatever it was. So she mailed it to us in San Diego, and we just kind of took pictures of him in random places and then sent him back. And it was it was actually a lot of fun, but that kind of reminds me of yeah. this liberation front and what they're doing. And I honestly, I think it's hilarious. And... Um, you know, I, I hope that if the gnome wants to return home to the garden, that he is able to. Um, yeah, you know, I'm and not that sure. It, that it's, you know, but I, I understand if they want to be in the forest. And <laughs> Yeah, I actually okay. don't know. It'd be interesting to find out. I actually don't know what those people do. With I know. It kind, of makes me, it kind of makes me wonder because... Yeah, I, I bet there's a whole like forest somewhere in France France or England that's just like filled with gnomes that they yeah. breed. And it's like the Smurf Village. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. I mean, I, I would assume, I mean, if this was me, I would assume that you you take the gnome, you put it in this special, amazing place in the forest. And I, I mean, if I knew that this organization existed around me, I'd probably buy gnomes specifically so they could go to this special place in the forest because they need to be free from the shops as well. Mm -hmm. um, fun fact about North County, San Diego Speaking of being freed, these poor gnomes probably, <laughs> the, the Gnome Liberation Front should probably visit one of the neighborhoods in North County because I heard through my research, I didn't actually hear it, I read it in my research on our little story here, that there's a whole entire neighborhood where if you have a bunch of gnomes in your yard, that's the sign that you're a swinger. Um, and that you're into that kind of a thing, so that like people wow. just that's kind of full circle if you think about kind of the origins of the gnomes and everything. Yeah, with the ancient Roman and the, the fertility, fertility, God. fertility God. <clears throat> so like originally when I had I had him outside, he was like kind of a doorstop. He's always been used as like a door stopper. And I then I went and I painted this guy. I love gnomes. I mean like I've always loved mm -hmm. them. So when <clears throat> we went to some birthday party and I painted this guy at the ceramic place. And I put him outside. And then when I read that, I'm like, uh-uh, you guys are coming back inside the house because who knows what people are going to think, right? They see gnomes in front of my house. Yeah, well, and also, just a little segue, you know, it's kind of interesting that, you know, a lot of times if you have any objects from your family um, or that you've inherited or maybe you've inherited the house or something, a lot of times people are putting things in their gardens mm -hmm. and people are using them as doorstops and they're actually really valuable, maybe yeah. for the family valuable or actually monetarily valuable. So, um, you know, if you inherit a house, you know, or a doorstopper, you might want to check it out and double check that it maybe should not be used as a doorstopper <laughs> or out in the garden. Right, because you never know when people will think you're a swinger, for example. Or that. <laughs> or that. No, but I think it's really interesting the difference between... Is there like a special color for these like swingers? Well, the, no, well, no, because they usually look like the red pointed hats and the, the beards. This one, my, my grandpa's one has the lantern and the keys he's holding, um, but... Usually, and they're, the ones with the lantern and the keys are usually called roaming gnomes mm. because they're like roaming around, checking things out, locking things up, you know, 
protecting things with they're searching the forest in your garden, protecting the house and all that kind of stuff. But there's they're actually portrayed doing a lot of other things like fishing, um, smoking pipes, napping. Is napping gnomes? Yeah, there's actually a lot of different. Kinds. I would be a napping gnome. Yeah, I'd love to be a napping gnome. <laughs> I've seen I've seen gnomes um, used in like as portraying Santa, or I've seen a couple of them where um, like it's like Bermuda shorts mm-hmm. and it's like vacay vacay gnome. Vacay gnome. Um, it's the clock somewhere. Yeah, but I know there was also like some movie that came out where it has like some some story. Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Yeah, and there's actually I just I just watched the movie the other day, and there's like a, a number two of that coming out. I don't oh, know good! I haven't even seen the first. But um, I, I saw the first one. It was kind of cute. Was it cute? It was cute. It was oh. funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. They're mostly men. Like they're mostly male gnomes. I don't think there's a whole lot of female gnomes. I think I think that's changing. I think that I think that um, you know, gender politics and. Gender equality has probably reached the gnomes, which it should. I mean, you should have female gnomes and male well, gnomes. How do the male gnomes and come also into existence and also without the female gnomes? Exactly, <laughs> and all gnomes don't necessarily have to have a beard, either. I mean, yes, they're typically portrayed in the same way with the you know the beard and the red hat, but you know, with all these gnomes that are out there today, you can have your gnome doing whatever, basically. Yeah, yeah. fishing, like you said, fishing. reading a book, napping, napping. My favorite though is like I think I saw a couple of them that was like surfing gnomes. <laughs> surfing gnomes, they're awesome. I like the, the wine gnomes. Oh yes, the wine. Those gnomes. are my favorite. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. There you go. <laughs> well, I hope that you have enjoyed our little muse story about the gnomes today because we definitely enjoy sharing it with you. Yes, and uh, if you have any topic ideas for us. We're happy to hear them. Um, we have a whole bunch of ideas in our heads of what we want to, you know, explore for ourselves and share with you guys. So please um, like us, um, subscribe, all that good stuff, and um, check out our website, musecuratorial.com, and shoot us a little email with some of your story ideas. Yeah, and we're on Instagram, at Muse Stories. So be sure to follow us there. We'll have um, live feeds on there sometimes about things that we encounter and places we go and uh, people we see and gnomes we meet and things like that. And remember, unusual stories, they're hidden all around us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.